Welcome back, and let's get the conversation started on our major story of the day. The 2019 elections will no doubt be an intense race. The eyes of the world are on Nigeria over these critical elections starting from February. It is now almost four years since a major opposition party sent an incumbent party backing, a situation that saw the then-president concede defeat. As we look towards the 2019 elections, Several issues are coming to the fore, from issues of whether or not and how we can achieve free and fair credible polls to the issues of peaceful conduct of elections, considering some of the security situation we're currently facing in the country. How can we achieve all of this? Well, we have one man who has represented the United Nations and has moved around met uh, political parties and the major players in this race is a special United Nations envoy representative for West Africa and the Sahel, Mr. Mohammed Ibn Chambers, joining us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much for coming on the program. And side by side with him is the INEC Director of Voter Education and Publicity, Mr. Oluwali Osazi Uzi. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Let's begin with the conversation now with uh, Mr. Oluwale Osazuzi. Let me take you up uh, quickly before we go into the uh, issues of credible election. It's on the, uh, a particular matter, and let me pin this uh, scenario to you. If there is an error made by the court, and the name of a party, for example, party ABC, is misspelled or misrepresented or misrepresented, uh, uh, configured in a court injunction as X, Y, Z. What is the implication for one, the aggrieved party, the party that is benefiting from it, and for INEC? Well, it's difficult for me to speak about uh, a situation such as that. Um, it depends, the uh, last will tell you, it depends on the nature of the error you have referred to. If from the... Um, papers, when we read of summons or originating summons, the name of the party is clear, but it's misspelled, a minor error with the party's name, for example, that can be amended if an application is made to court. But if there's a fundamental error, such that it refers to a non-existent party or some other party, then that may not, it may not be cured by what lawyers call a misnomer. It won't be a misnomer but it's something that goes to the very root, fundamental of the case. And if a non-existent party, is, if an action is instituted in the name of a non-existent party, then everything pursuant to that summons is void, ab initial right from the very beginning is void, and it cannot, it has no force of law. So it depends on the particular instance you refer to. Let me be specific then. Tell us what uh, does INEC know about the situation in Imo State? There's an allegation of a forged or fake court order. What do we know or what can you tell us? Well, um, I haven't read that. I haven't seen that. I am not aware of any uh, forged court order by any party. I'm not aware of any, so I cannot comment on what I don't know. I'm not aware. But what can you tell us about the situation in a political party where there are speculations over a mistake in an injunction of court uh, which led to the publishing of the name of a candidate of the party. Well, you're the one talking about uh, a mistake. I don't know what the nature of the mistake is or whether it's a mistake, but there are errors that vitiate the whole of a summons. If the error is fundamental, then everything built on it, as I say, you can't put something on nothing. Everything put on it goes and is void and has absolutely no effect. Um, I cannot comment on live cases, cases that are before the court. I cannot, uh, I, I think I know some law to know that it is sub and I cannot comment on the merits or how a case should go or not go once that case has been filed because the court is in total control of that case and anybody commenting on the merits or otherwise of that case does so at his or her own peril. It is contemptuous of the court and as a, as a lawyer and as a, as a staff of the Independent National Electoral Commission, which is a, a constitutional creation, I cannot in any way subvert the rule of law or subvert judicial process. So I cannot comment. I'm sorry. All right. Anything I, I, I guess uh, some of the truth in that matter will come to light in the 
coming hours. Let's move to our uh, topic of the day. Let me go to uh, Mr. Chambers. Uh, you've moved around, met with some of the major players in this race, considering the history uh, of Nigeria's election and the conversation, some of them behind closed doors that you've had. What are the feelers that you are getting? The feelers that um, we are getting uh, are quite positive. Uh, of course, the background is uh, against the highly successful elections of 2015, uh, since then, Nigeria has continued to improve electoral processes and procedures system. And um, we therefore expect that um, all Nigerians uh, are looking forward to elections that will be equally exemplary. Um, from the UN point of view, we always take into account the special role of Nigeria, uh, not only in West Africa sub-region, but indeed in Africa. And so we expect uh, uh, leadership from Nigeria, including in the conduct of uh, these all important elections uh, in February 2019, uh, precisely in 91 days, as you have uh, indicated. And, um, uh, this leadership is not uh, to be taken for granted. I think um, uh, you will know that only a few days ago, uh, there was a visiting uh, president of Guinea-Bissau who came to see the president of Nigeria. That is because of difficulties that Guinea-Bissau is having in the conduct of its legislative elections. And once again, uh, they are looking up to Nigeria to lead uh, in West Africa to help them to conduct uh, these legislative elections, uh, hopefully bef before the end of this year. And, and so, therefore, it behoves on Nigeria itself uh, to demonstrate this leadership, to be able uh, to hold uh, peaceful and credible elections. And so far, we are encouraged by what we see. I mean, uh, the primary season is uh, over. And uh, in the whole process of selection of candidates uh, has gone on uh, without uh, any uh, significant uh, violence. In indeed, it would be fair to say that that process has been violent-free. This has not always been the case uh, in Nigeria. So uh, that's an indicator that uh, we can expect that uh, the coming elections should be largely peaceful, nonviolent, uh, incredible. So, Ibn Chambers, uh, lead us to break uh, with a comment of 40 seconds. And uh, considering what opposition party are saying about uh, the ruling party here in Nigeria, the allegations of uh, intimidation, the allegations of uh, uh, the main party, the ruling party, I'm twisting the umpire in its favor. Do you see any of that tendency? If you lead us to uh, the break in 40 seconds with your comment. Uh, I think um, what we should uh, do is to understand that uh, all stakeholders should play their proper role, take up their responsibilities uh, in uh, these elections. Um, Successful elections depend on the contribution of different stakeholders. Certainly, the Electoral Commission has a key role, constitutional mandate, to conduct these, these elections. Uh, they have been working at it. Uh, the UN and other partners are supporting, and we will continue to do so, particularly in the technical areas. Um, but other stakeholders have their role. Political parties. Uh, have their role to okay. play. Uh, uh, we expect let, let me pause that you right there. Exercise restraint, uh, avoid. Uh, let me pause you right there because language. we need to take this break. There are other critical issues as to the role of INEC as the umpire, what they are doing, and some of the fears of an average Nigerian going into this election. We we'll tackle that when we come back from the break, everyone. Join us again.